Coast Guard Aviation in Los Angeles was bored in August of 1962 as an air detachment with two H-04 helicopters. The detachment was officially designated an air station and commissioned later that year in November with veteran Coast Guard aviator Commander Robert Smith, who was tabbed as the unit's first commanding officer. When we first started as an air facility, I mean, it wasn't even technically a base then. Uh, the co even the whole Coast Guard wasn't as multi-mission as we are now. So when you thought Coast Guard, it was search and rescue. Air Station Los Angeles, maybe in the very beginning, was thought of, hey, you're there in case an airliner goes down, has taken on all these roles. And we are very active in law enforcement, we're very active in uh, PWCS, you know, port security missions. Environmental response out here in California is extremely sensitive. A short time later, in May of 1963, Air Station Los Angeles was outfitted with two HH-52 Sea Guard helicopters to better support their search and rescue missions. A true workhorse, these aircraft were used in Los Angeles for nearly 24 years. It was a fantastic helicopter. It worked uh, very well in any situation we had. You can land on the water. It hovered nicely. When uh, you landed on the water, it was pretty much like being on a boat. Uh, you stood in the door, directed the pilot the exact same way you did in the air. You know, forward, forward, hold, things of that. And they got there, put the platform down, hauled the person in, threw them in the back, and came on home. For half a century, Coast Guard air crews have been saving the lives of those in dangers off the waters of Southern California. The thank you letters tell the story. It's too bad it takes an episode like that for a person to realize what a fine job the Coast Guard does. This letter is an attempt to thank you in words for a job beautifully accomplished by your men. I was in a very desperate state. I was again reminded how good it was to have the Coast Guard around. Having the Coast Guard around is exactly what the Los Angeles Chamber of Commerce, U.S. Senator Thomas H. Cutchell, and U.S. Representative James Roosevelt envisioned when they began pressing for a Coast Guard air presence at the Los Angeles International Airport back in 1962. At the time, LAX was the busiest airport in the U.S. As of 2011, LAX was the sixth busiest airport in the entire world. The thought was, should an airliner go down either on approach or departing the airport, a fast reaction by rescuers would be vital. Well, I think one thing that's unique to this air station is that we actually purchase and we maintain large mass casualty rafts. Um, some air stations don't have any. We actually have 10. Uh, the idea was the most, the, uh, the most likely scenario is a 737. Uh, how many people are on a 737? What would we do in case something like that uh, went into the water? Just six short years after the air station's commissioning, the disaster scenario became a reality. On January 13th of 1969, a Scandinavian Airlines DC-8 crashes eight miles off the coast of Los Angeles. Of the 45 people on board the aircraft, only 15 died. Air Station Los Angeles helicopters and the Coast Guard cutter Point Judith led the rescue efforts. While search and rescue is a mission as old as the Coast Guard itself, emerging technology was helping air crews conduct more successful nighttime rescues than ever before. Forward-looking infrared radar, or FLIR, proved its worth in July of 1981 as two men were saved near Malibu Point during the first successful nighttime rescue using the experimental equipment. What it's really helpful for is locking on a target. So if it's nighttime and you have a person in the water, if you can acquire them and get that heat signature or an engine, um, that's where it comes in really handy. As the air station began to celebrate 20 years in operation, drastic budget cuts threatened to close the hangar doors forever. The Coast Guard even provided a formal notice of the unit's demise 
scheduled for July 1st of that year. It was a move that prompted Admiral Al Manning to tell a newspaper that there was... There is no, no question that there could be a significant loss of life without nearby helicopters. If you were relying on an air station that was 100 miles away, um, that time component there, several bad things could happen. A storm of public and congressional protest ensued, and the unit was saved. I don't know how you could really do it. Like, who would respond in a timely manner to the millions of people in the L.A. basin? Welcome to the opening ceremony. Los Angeles was chosen as a host city for the 1984 Summer Olympics, bringing together some of the world's finest athletes. But like many other international events, security became a top priority. The Coast Guard air crews were called into action and three more aircraft were brought in. The enormous challenge of a wide open AOR, no choke points really, um, and then who could actually do harm to the U.S., who could do harm to you know, the critical infrastructure in this region. In January of 2000, the air station's original intent of being a quick response unit in the case of an airplane crash was tested again as Alaska Airlines Flight 261 crashed two miles north of Anacapa Island. Unfortunately, the water. nobody survived the impact. From its establishment to today, spanning 50 years of operations, Coast Guard Air Station Los Angeles maintained a 24-hour-a-day, 365-day-a-year readiness to respond to any mission. The air crews are responsible for an area of operation from Dana Point to Morro Bay, and sometimes even further. Los Angeles air crews conducted rooftop rescues in the wake of Hurricane Katrina in 2005, provided essential aerial views of Deepwater Horizon oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico in 2010, and even flew into the icy Arctic during the fall of 2012. This was just an idea, put an, put an aviation detachment here in LAX in case something happens, and for 50 years we've been showing just how important we are. You still get that adrenaline rush and you still, you know, you have that rescue mentality. It's just like, that's why you pick this job. If one goes out, you know, you, depending on how heavy you are, we can, we can keep flying, you know, but imagine back then with one engine, man, that's, that's scary. <laughs> 83, I believe, and I've been wearing it ever since. This is an HH-65 and it means a lot to me. So I think it's interesting to look back at history to think of all the previous aviators that worked in these spaces. But we've been relevant enough that it's worth the investment uh, and we're doing great things in Los Angeles.